number 77. Write the Lewis structures of the reactants and product of each of the following equations and identify the Lewis acid and the Lewis base in each. Okay, so we first have to write out the Lewis structures. That's nothing new to us. We've already done a whole chapter on this channel just designated to how to draw Lewis structures. So if you need like a more, you know, specific overview, always go back to that chapter. I think it's like chapter eight in this textbook, actually chapter seven, maybe, but one of those it's on the playlist. So this will kind of be like a briefened version of how to draw the Lewis structures. I wrote down here all the valence electrons that we need for this problem. The only thing that's new is now take those Lewis structures and figure out which one is the acid and the base, specifically the Lewis acid and the Lewis base. Okay, so let's go. CS2, least electronegative in the middle. Seems like carbon is going to be the, in the middle surrounded by the two sulfurs. So I have C, and maybe I'll do an S and an S. Carbon has four valence electrons, so I'll say one, two, three, four. And each sulfur has six valence electrons, so I'll say one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's at least single bond them up just to see if we can get the octet. But it seems like I'm one short, I have seven valence electrons or seven total electrons, so I need to double bond on both sides, and now everybody's happy. So that's the CS2. This is coming in with now an SH. So it seems like I have one sulfur on one side and an H on the other side. Let's draw out the valence electrons. I have one, two, three, four, five, six for the sulfur, and I have one for the hydrogen. Keep in mind that you have a negative charge. Negative charges means that you gained one electron. So I have to put one more extra dot on one of these elements. It's generally always the more electronegative element out of the two. So sulfur is more electronegative than hydrogen. So I'm just gonna add that one, bond, that one dot there. Let's bond it up. Boop. And if we wanted to find out which element specifically has that negative charge, we could do the formal charges, and it turns out that this sulfur is the one that has the negative one charge. So I'm just gonna put that there. Now, let's just make the product. Well, it seems like I have still the carbon in the middle, and now I just need to have three sulfurs around it and then a hydrogen. Keep in mind that this could act as an acid because I do see that the H is in the front. And when that happens, that means that the hydrogen is actually bound to the more electronegative element. So in this case, I have already my carbon with the two sulfurs, so I'm just gonna copy and paste that. And then it seems like all I need to do is just add the one more sulfur. So maybe I'll add it to the top here, so S. And then that hydrogen is bound to that more electronegative element. So I'm gonna put the H up top here. Let's do the valence electrons. Um, I did sulfur as blue, so we'll do it in blue. One, two, three, four, five, six for sulfur, and one for the hydrogen. Keep in mind, we have another negative charge. That means that we gained one electron. Out of these two, just put it towards the more electronegative element. So I'm just gonna, oop, right here. Let's just make that bond between the H and the S. And now I say, wait a minute, I don't have another electron to bond with the sulfur. But do we see how literally these are the two exact drawings? Now I'm just gonna combine them into one, right? This is this just turned like 90 degrees. So that means that if I'm gonna try to bring this to the carbon, that means that one of the lone pairs, specifically this one, so I'll make it this one, is going to have to form a bond, right? It seems like these lone pairs are gonna go and attack that carbon. Oop. So when that happens, they don't go as two lone pairs anymore. Remember, two lone electrons are just one bond. But now carbon has way too many. Remember, carbon can't have an extended octet. So one of these double bonds have to break. I don't care whether this double bond breaks or this one breaks, right? If it's this one or this one. 
So I'm just going to do it on the, I guess, this side. So this bond is going to break. And those electrons go back to the more electronegative element. So in this case, if this bond breaks, that means that these two electrons, and maybe I can do it like this, goodbye bond, those electrons are still here, but they're going to form, and now they're going to come back to that sulfur. And now if you look, this sulfur has the octet, this carbon has the octet, Everybody's got the octet. Everybody's nice and happy. If we wanted to find out where that negative charge is, we would just do the formal charge on each. And it turns out that this sulfur is the one that now has that negative one charge. Okay. So who is the Lewis base? The Lewis base is the one that kickstarts the reaction. It's the one that donates that electron pair. So since it all started from this, and then there was like a chain reaction, this compound had to have been the Lewis base. That one was the one that had those two electrons that turned into the bond. So maybe I'll just highlight that. That is this now. And then the other one is the Lewis acid. It accepted those two electrons. And just know that if you do see a negative charge, generally it's gonna be the Lewis base. And keep in mind that Lewis acids and Lewis bases are only on the reactant side. We just look at the product just to see what's going on. But the Lewis base and the Lewis acid are the reactants. All right? Okay, that's it for me. I really hope this has helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And I hope you guys are doing a great or having a great day. Keep, keep studying hard, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.